Hello, my little fireflies. Okay, I'm back with you. And yes, I have on the same shirt that I had in the previous video. Um, because actually, it's the same day. The um, chocolate bread and the English muffins I did this morning. And now we're on up into the afternoon. And I'm going to make dinner. And we are going to make meatloaf we're gonna do my husband's favorite meal meatloaf and this is a crackle barrel dupe meatloaf anytime we go to the crackle barrel um that's what my husband gets is their meatloaf he loves their meatloaf um now i think that i make a pretty gar darn tootin good meatloaf but i'm trying this recipe out um it has a lot of the same flavors that I put in seasonings that I put in my meatloaf, but a couple of things different. So we're going to try out the copycat Crackle Barrel meatloaf. So I will bring you down and we'll start adding our ingredients. Okay, I have got two pounds of ground beef. Come on, get every little morsel. There we go. Okay, two ground, two, two grounds, pound beef, two pounds of ground beef. Gonna break it up some. And there's a couple things that I really hate doing and cooking. And that's touching ground beef and mixing it up. But I'll do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, kinda got that kind of broken up some. Okay, I'm going to add my wet ingredients. I have got a half a cup of milk. And then we're going to do three eggs. I'm going to mix as good as I can before I have to get my hands in there. So it's really hard to get everything mixed up in your meatloaf without just getting your hands in there. Basic ingredients, usually find milk and eggs and meatloaves. Okay. Now I'm going to add, this is probably third a cup chopped bell peppers. I'm using the red. I didn't have any green. I had yellow and red and orange. I thought the red might show up better. And then I chopped up one small onion. It's probably three-fourths of a cup. That's what it came out to be. Not quite a cup and over a half. So we're going to go with three-fourths. Okay. And then I'm going to add a good pinch salt, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon, and then we're going to add some, oh my goodness, oh my, go 
Holy macaroni! Okay, we're going to have to dip some of this excessive black powder out. This is real life, folks. Golly! That. <sighs> Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Oh. Okay, one, that was wasteful, and two, that was stupid. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> well, this is going to be very peppery. It ain't going to be very peppery because we like pepper, but I mean, that's how much I took back out. Oh. I thought I had it on the shaker side. I thought that's what I was going for, but nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. All right, now we're going to add, this is the difference. I usually would use breadcrumbs or saltine crackers. This is um, smashed up Ritz crackers. That's what the dupe um, recipe called for. And it calls for one and a half sleeves of Ritz crackers, but I bought the small box. It had smaller sleeves, so I just used two sleeves. And I just put them in a Ziploc bag and rolled it with my rolling pin. All right, I'm fixing to have to get in here with my hands. Add the last ingredient, which is about a third cup of um, grated cheddar cheese, which I don't normally put in my um, meatloaf, but we will. I'm going to give me a wet rag ready and um, get in here with my hands. I'll be right back. I didn't mean get a wet rag. I'm getting my warm water turned under my sink so I can immediately go over there and wash my hands. Mmm, the rich crackers smell good though. So I'm gonna make sure you get all of this incorporated, all the breadcrumbs, the cheese, the salt, the pepper, the peppers, the onions, the eggs. good. All right, let me wash my hands. Okay. Looks pretty good. Throw away that, all that excess pepper that's got some meat in it. in my cast iron pan. This is, I think I've looked before for you and I don't have any markings. Um, it's about a nine, eight, oh yeah. 
probably an eight. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to turn this out over in here. And I'm just going to form it up. I like to, I don't like to press it all the way down and make a flat one because I want to see how much grease is collected in the bottom because I'll drain it off. <clears throat> And this way, I've left some room on each on each side, so I can see the grease and um, drain it off before we eat it. So it's not just just sitting down in that that grease. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for now. It's not time to go in the oven, and we will. Um, do the topping for it, the, the ketchup topping for it, um, right before we put it in the oven. So, we'll be back. Okay, I am going to um, do, I don't know how to say this, the cornmeal that I buy from Azure is very roughly ground. I don't know, it's got bigger pieces in it. It's not good to make cornbread. It needs to be milled um, finer for cornbread. I mean, it's just, it makes such a dense, dense cornbread if you try to make it out of this. So it needs to be ground down more. So I do give it another grind in my Nutri-Meal grain meal. And so I was going to get some up for us to make some cornbread tonight. So, if you... need recommendations on a Nutri-Meal. I have got the um, the classic Nutri-Meal and then I've also got the Harvest. Um, I've got both of them and I may do a side-by-side -side comparison on those one day, but for right now the classic is my go-to. <laughs> Sounds like a rocket ship powering off. Actually, it's not as loud as the harvest. makes more like a um, cornmeal flour. <clears throat> but it works better in cornbread, I believe. So anyway, I've got my cornmeal ground up um, for our cornbread. I'll be back. Okay, we are going to make the topping for the loaf. Okay, so we need a half to three-fourths cup of ketchup. And let me see. And I'm going to be using this Portland ketchup that I got from Azure. I've heard a lot of good things about it. And I am a Heinz girl. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. Let's see how easy it's going to be to get out of this bottle. Reminds me of that, you know, the old ketchup glass bottles that you had to sit there and beat on to get out. So this is going to be a half of a cup. My 
battery died, so I don't know where it cut off. But anyway, I have got a half a cup of ketchup in here. And it said to use a half to three-fourths cup of ketchup. So I'm starting out with a half. And then you need one teaspoon of mustard. And pour the watery part off that's always on it. And let's see. It's probably... I'll say that's a teaspoon. And we're going to do two tablespoons of brown sugar. And I, um, I make my own brown sugar. I don't know if I've showed y'all that before. If not, I'll insert a video showing you how to make your own homemade brown sugar. It tastes so much better than store-bought. This is how I make my brown sugar at home. So I've got a one cup measuring cup. And I'm going to do one, two, Four cups of white sugar. This is the organic sugar cane that I get from Asher Standard. And then I'm using this organic, let me see if I can get in there, black strap molasses. You don't have to use black strap, you don't have to use organic. I just got that from Azure Market and I like the black strap. And this is a half of a cup. Let me get my. And I'm going to try to get as much of this out of here. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use my hand mixer. I keep my um, KitchenAid stored in a cabinet and it's, you know, it's heavy and I just don't feel like getting it out for this. So I'm just going to use my hand blender to mix this up. It's going to be noisy. Now, <clears throat> this is um, a darker brown sugar. If you like a light brown sugar, um, you can use less molasses. If you want a darker, you can use more molasses. molasses. This is about like I like it. And I had made a big thing of it, and this was just my overflow that didn't fit in my big container. So I'm using it first. That is all you add. Okay. We're going to put it on our meatloaf. Half a cup of ketchup is just fine on this. Okay, and this goes into a preheated 350 degree oven 
Um, I'll check it after 30 minutes to see. I think it'll take longer, but you just never know. Okay, so that's going to go into my... Okay, and with tonight's dinner, I'm going to make some mashed potatoes. And some zipper peas that I had canned. And if you don't know what zipper peas are, they are, they're kind of like a black eye pea, but they just don't have the black eyes of a black eye pea. But um, it's a, a creamier pea, too, than black eye peas. They're good. So we're going to have mashed potatoes, peas, and I have this bunch of asparagus that I bought at the store that I need to cook up. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to have cornbread. So I think that's a meal fit for a king. What y'all think? So I'm going to sit here and cut up these potatoes, and I'm going to get these on to boil. We're going to mix these up with some butter, some sour cream, and some cheese and garlic. They're going to be delicious. Okay, I got those cut up, and I'm just going to give it a heavy sprinkling of salt. And we'll put go over here and put these on the stove. Okay, I'm going to get the peas in a pot. And these are fully cooked, of course, after the canning process. So I'm just going to put them on there on low and just let them be heating through. Okay, we're gonna get this asparagus go, and I've got a, a little over a tablespoon of butter in here, and then we'll add some avocado oil to my skillet. I would say maybe a good tablespoon, and then I'm giving the asparagus a rinse, and I'm just gonna cut the ends off of them because those are tough and fibrous. Just like that. We'll add some salt. Pepper. And some garlic. This is um, garlic cloves that I had dehydrated. Oh, it smells so good. And we're just going to saute this until they start getting soft. Potatoes are going over here. I got the peas going over back there and got the meatloaf in the oven. Okay, we're going to work on the cornbread now. Down here with it. Alright, in here I've got a cup of the ground cornmeal that I did and a cup of all purpose flour. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of baking powder. That a stir and a pinch of salt. beaten. Get that incorporated. And then I use buttermilk in my cornbread. And I don't measure. Let me measure. 
this is a cup. Start out with a cup. This I got at the store. It is Bulgarian. Old recipe Bulgarian style buttermilk. And it's really thick. Instead of putting oil in mine, I usually put butter. So I've got some melted butter here for the mashed potatoes and this. And I'm probably going to put probably a good two tablespoons of melted butter. That's a good consistency. my skillet in the oven getting hot with some oil in the bottom of it. I just let it um, preheat in there and then we're just going to add our cornbread. It's already sizzling. Okay, and back in the oven. couple things about my hair's going wild um, we don't add sugar to our cornbread we don't like sweet cornbread um, so if you like sugar in your cornbread just add some sugar into your cornbread the meatloaf's been in the oven about 30 minutes I checked it it's nowhere near done it registered like a 70 degrees and it needs to be like 160 degrees so I cranked the heat up on the oven to 400 degrees. Um, I like to cook my cornbread on 425, so so everything kind of gets finished at the same time. I'm doing it on 400. So waiting on that, I have got. Um, let me show you this. What I did with the asparagus is, is um, if you just let it sit there and cook with the oil and the um, garlic, the garlic kind of end up. Burning. So, after it sautés a while in that, I add water to it and get it to a boil because we like our um, asparagus on the soft side. So I did add water to it and brought it up and let it boil for a while. Basically, the um, water boils out of it and then it's good and soft. It seasons real good and I'm taking it off the heat. Our mashed potatoes are ready, so we will get started on those. Okay, I took the potatoes off and I put them through the a strainer. I'm going to add some of this melted butter. Just a couple of splashes of milk. And then I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese. garlic powder and some sour cream. I'm going to do like two heaping tablespoons of sour cream. Some pepper. 
and then I'm just going to add just a smidge of salt because I salted the potatoes really good when I was cooking them. So I'm going to give these a blend. It's a little bit more milk. Two more tablespoons. Okay. And then I'm going to add some cheddar cheese. Oh yeah, delicious. I'm gonna blend it up just a little bit more. I got some chunks. Okay, cornbread's ready. Ah oh, yeah. Yep. It's beautiful. I'm still waiting on the meatloaf. 30 minutes is a joke according to that recipe. I should have known better. I'm going on an hour. And it's still not done. <clears throat> so, I'll bring you back whenever the it gets done because we are ready to eat. Okay, it finally got done. It took like an hour and a half for the meatloaf to get done. But, I'll bring you down here and show you my plate. So, I got the meatloaf, the asparagus, the zipper peas, the mashed potatoes, and the cornbread. Yum, and we're starving. Hey, sweet friends, I wanted to jump on here um, after the fact to let you know how we thought the meatloaf tasted. In my husband's words, quote, it was the best meatloaf he's ever had, unquote. Um, it was very good. Now, did it taste like the crackle barrels? No, I don't think so. It was it was different, um, but it was a very good meatloaf. And me and him both agree we didn't like the sweetness of the tomato, the ketchup sauce on top of it. So when I make it next time, I will not put the brown sugar in. I'll just do a, a ketchup based um, topping on the meatloaf. So if that's something, if you think that you would like the sweetness, keep the, the, the sugar in. Um, but our traditionalist meatloaf taste buds don't like the sweetness on it. But it was very good, and I urge you to try it. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. I cannot tell you. I can't put into words how much it means to me that you've got eyes on my video and are watching. Um, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Y'all have a good week.